um, first up, and uh, Meredith and I are going to help Karen Leslie. We'll let Meredith introduce. Yes, this is Karen Leslie, who's the Administrative Assistant for the Planning Department and also the Wastewater, Wastewater Department. And she has been a godsend in helping to reach our goal of revising our uh, Sewer Commission website to make it responsive to the citizens of Mashpee. But I also have to do a major shout out to Sandy Tripp from GHD for, a, for a, the amount of help that she's also given to Karen and to Evan in changing the website. So what we're gonna do is to run through the changes, the new website, and if you have any questions or suggestions, please feel free to do that. And if you do think it's ready to go, then we are gonna be ready to go live and then start to schedule our information sessions so that people learn how to use the website. So give us practice in using it, give citizens practice in using it, and we can move forward from there. So Karen, take it away, and we'll be glad to help in any way we can in your presentation. Yeah. And thank you so much for all your work that you've done on it. Of course, thank you. Looking to streamline and make it a little more efficient. So one thing, you'll see um, up on the screen, this, this page will be your new landing page and it is primarily about the project that's at hand and on everyone's mind. So we're trying to make it easy for our users, like Meredith said, to come in and click on the various links to get to the information that they're looking for. And I just want to point out that the information that's here, it's not really new information. All this information was out there, but again, we've just streamlined it and tried to make it easier from a user perspective. So first they can, well, first and most importantly, we have created a link to the plan, which we're managing by. So they can, I'll just show you just so you understand. You just click on it and it will bring you right to the plan itself. And just to remember, just so that you all remember, this is the one that was presented in 2015, written by GHD, and that it was the one that was approved by the Massachusetts um, uh, Depart Department of Environmental Protection. So this is the plan that Mashpee is following at this point with modifications. So going back, down here are all the links that are going to be pertinent to the user. So the first they're going to ask, am I eligible for the new sewer service? And they can click here, and it will take them to a new page. And I'm not going to click on all the links for you today, but we have the links to the streets that are targeted in phase one, the maps for all, that shows all the phases, and our um, interactive GIS website. So once they come here and see if they're eligible, they can go back to our main menu. How do I connect? This will help them understand what their responsibilities are. And as we're all familiar with, um, there's a link to the green stake. We have a picture showing them what to expect. And again, all the information that was there previously, we have a link to the utility installers. One of the things you'll also realize that from the utility uh, installers that came from the Board of Health, uh, Karen and Evan were also able to get the names of the companies, because this was one of the questions that people had. It's just not just the names, but it was also, I think, um, that um, Contact the names. person in Board of Health, um, Mr. Seabury, was also able to furnish the complete list now with the names of the companies as well as the name of the contractors so that, there, as Karen brought it up. Oh, so right. this makes it so much easier for people to make a decision of who to contact or neighborhoods to con who to contact. And is, is um, Karen and Catherine both say that we're, we're still in, you know, under production mm -hmm. and we'll continue to make changes. Like one of the things that Karen had said, let's put the company in the companies in alphabetical order if we can. Mm -hmm. But we're working in close contact with um, uh, the Board of Health as well. So after they find the information about connecting, they can come down to anticipated costs, which explores the financing options that are available. So and we, since we don't have costs yet, 
we're kind of making it clear. We don't know what the costs are going to be, but there are financing, financing options that we do know about. As information becomes available for each one of these sections, um, things will be um, um, up, updated and, and fixed. So it's about maintenance of a website going forward, which Karen is perfectly capable of doing, as long as she gets fed the information. The next tab is the road closures and other construction updates. So here, right in the beginning, we have a link to any road closures due to the project. We have the previous GHD construction updates, the upcoming construction schedule, and then the maps for the current phase one, north, south, and Summerwood. Then we have a placeholder for a few other items that we would like to include, you know, moving forward. And as the commissioners said, it is a work in progress. So we are filling in some of those blanks. Next, we have a frequently asked questions section. And one of the things that we did here before your frequently asked que questions was a five page document. And so we took that document and we categorized it into the different categories and broke it down just to make it easier instead of scrolling through the five pages to see what they might be looking for. And again, we linked the plan. So general, the lateral FAQs. Can I make a suggestion? You're calling it lateral. You're getting into engineering terms, and that's confusing to the typical person that hasn't been confronted with it all their lives. It should say homeowner's connection service. Okay. The word homeowner instead of back up one page, please. Joe, would you suggest an editorial to lateral, that? Lateral, it would be homeowner's lateral connection is my suggestion. Okay. Would you accept an order editorial change with it being property owner because some of them may be businesses? Yes. Could just say owners. Or just owners, yeah. Mm -hmm. it Resident does. or residents or what the hell? Well, business. Yeah, that's a good point. Business person. Um, it yeah. does explain pretty well right next to it what it means. Yeah. Your obligations when you're eligible for sewer service and the green stake yeah. is placed in your lawn. I don't have one. I guess I'm not getting a stake. Um, but I think that's that's a good point, Joe. It, but it's also explained. It could well. be better defined. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We'll we'll cogitate so on that. Property owners was that the, the yeah. best property owners would be the yeah. proper I think term. So. That's that's the way. You don't want to have people that are renting calling up and just oh, confusing no. the issue because they're agreed. not the property owners. So. Absolutely agreed. Thank you. And after the FAQs, the last is the what's next. So here we put in information about what's to come for the project and the important votes coming up at both the town meeting and the town election. Going back to um, what we're calling the main page, we have also streamlined some of the uh, blue tabs over to the left. Ch Chad, I'm going to call on Joe here for yes, go ahead. again. Um, in the what's next section, I haven't been able to read it far enough to make sure I, I know the answer to my question. The town is already on a path to bring to the voters the next expansion or the finishing of phase one. All right. Mm -hmm. It's this meeting that's coming up now to say we're going <clears> to <throat> vote on the seven grand necessary to finish the plans to finish number one. Okay, but then there's another eighty thousand dollars that we've got to vote on. Is uh, wouldn't it be appropriate to say something in the what's next program <clears throat> statement? 
perhaps. We didn't know how far in detail we should go until the information is actually going to, become, is going to come before the voters. And since this is going to be this fall, there may be some new information, or there should be some new information about additional funding in May or for the Maytown meeting. I think we can probably, if everyone agrees, leave it as is until the next town meeting passes and we have our... And, and we get a good um, what we're gonna a good going. feel for what the statement should be so it's consistent across the website. All right. We've had to be vague enough, I think, in this yeah. whole process yeah. um, that introducing uh, more language that might change later or be vague uh, further I don't think would help. Uh, the I, next revision, I think, after October's meeting, we can add something. Yeah, and I would just add that that we are, are, are <laughs> keenly aware of the importance of recognizing that there are other departments that 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 work on the project tangentially: water quality, um, conservation, um, et cetera, and the Board of Health and the Select Board. That we have to be aware of what their websites say. And, Very good and point. We have to synchronize language and any opportunity. So, you know, it's part of that conf confusion that can occur when so many people are working on on different things and not always paying attention to each other. So, as we go forward, we want to be keenly aware of that mm -hmm. sensitive issue. Thank so. you, Catherine. Mm -hmm. Other, I'm sorry. Please proceed. That's okay. Um, I just wanted to point out that we made a couple of changes to the persistent links that stay out to the left of the website. We've defined the water quality challenge. Again, this is all information that was in the website previously. We're just calling it out. Um, you want to point out the videos too? Oh, right. The 2021 videos. We have links to the videos here at the bottom of this page and who the panelists were. Then we've also dedicated a new tab for the WRRF, again with information that already existed out there today. Then we have a tab for the commission policies and regulations. So we have the rules and regulations and the two policies that have been previously approved by the Sewer Commission. We also created a archive and reference section. This is one of those sections that I would say is definitely a work in progress as what we've done now. Previously, there were links to links to links and we've removed all of those links, have one link to click on the document, including a brief description I still need help with a few of these. And currently they're in chronological order. However, we were talking this morning about possibly um, creating um, categories. categories. Yes, thank you. So this will be something that will be a work in progress. And then same as before, this other agency contacts with links to the various agencies. No ones have been added here too, right? We've added a couple. I haven't added any. Oh, okay. So it's all, all what was existing before. Mm -hmm. And then the only thing that I want to point out, I'm just going to go to the current web page and just point out that the um, this information will, the calendar will still be there, the agendas, the minutes, and then I've updated the, it's, it's not here yet, but I'm updating this table so that it says title and I'm going to add a separate column for the precincts. And then um, we also thought it would be a good idea to add myself. And then when we have the new wastewater superintendent appointed, uh, we would, you know, his or her name would be up here as a contact as well. And then the other thing that I'll point out here is that it, should someone want to email the sewer commission, those emails are gonna be routed to myself and then I'll be able to direct them to the sewer commission members. Excuse me, uh, Chad, did you know where the emails are going? Were they coming to you? I am not currently getting them. Meredith, they were going to Ray. 
Oh, they were going to. I just found home. this out. Yeah, okay. that's, that's what that, I That was suspected. a mystery. We, the, you know, yeah. we knew that you could click on the link to the sewer commission, but we did mm -hmm. no idea where the emails were going. So we didn't know if people were trying to contact us or if they had questions or what was happening. So the mystery was solved in digging out this information. So that's, that's it. I don't know if anybody has any questions for me. I gotta say you've done everybody involved. Well, and it wonderful job. We really appreciate your support and Evan's support in this and uh, GHD support. This is uh, light years ahead of where we were, and it's a perfectly timely uh, hour to uh, go live with this right ahead of the town meeting. So I very much appreciate everybody's efforts. Thank just you. Fun to add. Uh, to, to Sandy and all the other contractors that are working on the project um, to review this and to review the website and see if they have suggestions on improvements that, that, that they can mm. um, maybe contribute. Um, we're looking for improvements from all perspectives, potential improvements from all perspectives, and we'll consider them. Um, we just got to be careful about language and you know, avoid confusion and stuff like that. But there is opportunity for improvement in several areas here, and we're still working on improving a GIS um, connection. Um, so there's a new GIS later that's being worked on. But we don't think that should hold up the rollout, so we want to go ahead and, um, and pursue this, and we hope that we have the support of the commission to, to try and roll this out in coming days. Great. Thank you so much, Karen. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Thanks. May mm -hmm. I make a motion that we accept the changes in the new website? Because once the sewer commission is able to okay it, then we're also getting approval from the town manager, his, his office, to roll it out so that we'll be able to go live within this week if, in fact, the sewer commission approves it. I would like to second your motion, Madam Vice Chair. Thank you. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Aye. Unanimous. Thank you. Okay. Construction update with GHD. Be before we move to that, yes, I'd like course. to add just one more thing. Oh. That once we um, have the word from the town manager's office, I'd let them like to work with um, the enterprise and also with Mashpee TV to start rolling out the information sessions so that we can have some live demonstrations of the new website for Mashpee residents and have kind of an office hours of different commissioners at different places at different times between now and October 16th then. Fantastic idea. You'll get no argument from me and let me know how I can help. Yeah, okay. I hope everybody contributes to that effort. Um, I think it would be valuable well, to we'll be check seen. With, we'll check yeah. with people's schedules and yeah. see who's available for when and, and have, you know, not to be a huge burden on people, but to have people available to answer, ask and answer questions and to demonstrate exactly. it. Exactly. Could we do that at Bobby Burns? <laughs> <laughs> we could we check could. Bobby Burns and <laughs> see if that would work. <laughs> Worked for the founding fathers. Long as we get attention. <laughs> we hadn't thought of that. I think that's a great idea. Thank you. <laughs> okay, if I disconnect this. Yes. Oops. As I disconnected. Do <laughs> you need any help here? Uh, I think I'm okay. okay. Yeah, maybe might be less disastrous. Okay. Oh, do you, you don't need that? Okay. Fabulous. I do need... It's acting Doesn't like look I've like got, you have a lot to say. <laughs> it's acting like I've got three monitors and I don't. <coughs> it's hmm. getting no signal. Our system here is getting no signal from your computer.
Are you um, on power? I'm connected. Maybe there's a cable disconnect somewhere. Was that your home screen that was up a moment ago? I can restart, but that'll take a little bit. Um, You're in? I may not have any choice. It had something. You did. If you right-click your um, desktop home screen, then you can come up with display settings. What's that? If you right-click your desktop home screen, it'll come up with display settings. Oh. And then okay. you can ask it to identify the monitors. Let's see if it does. I'm restarting my machine. I apologize for this. No problem. Anybody been out to the plant lately? Al? Al. Yeah. There's a lot going on out yeah. there. Yeah. <laughs> I saw a bunch of new uh, containers. Containers right? and people and yeah. different trades out there now. So we're, we're getting out of the ground and into um, pretty much surface work. Getting complete with concrete, with the exception of the process tanks. Mm -hmm. That's a lot of concrete, so. All right. I don't know what to do. When in doubt, just reboot the whole thing, too. You should just did. Oh, okay. I rebooted reboot, the computer, so you said right-click. Let's, let let's see it till I get in. <sighs> Might just work when you do you want to can you load it into the other computer help <laughs> the experts here I'll have a uh, I'm getting in I decided to reboot see if that helped apparently not <laughs> yeah I don't know I'm not sure display mm, yeah <sighs> Al, from your perspective, when you've been to the plant, what, it, what is your perspective on it? Why do I have two? I, I think it's going along very smoothly. This is one. What's two? Uh, they're, you know, they've got a few hiccups in terms of uh, deliveries, but uh, nothing major. Swimmingly, huh? Swimmingly, yeah. I mean, they, Could we make two we've got the maces there now, and uh, they're back on. Basically, all the concrete for the plant is in. Uh, they certainly have had, a, I was impressed by the number of people I keep seeing there. Mm, yeah. mm. They're all over the place. A lot of cars. Uh, <laughs> Excellent. And uh, I like I like yeah. Frank, the supervisor. The plant supervisor is fabulous. Very, 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 yeah. very Unless good. that's two. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe if we try to unplug it again. Okay, now it's just go. I was wondering if uh, we could get the uh, Mashpee Enterprise to uh, yep. do an article yeah, on where the stand the is and up there now so you can see things. Mm. Yeah. And people would see their get there. Is that your photograph? Yeah. That's yeah. my. Yeah, yeah, I can reach out. This is, it is, it is. So if I open up my PowerPoint. The photo that we were talking about earlier. Mm. It's not. I don't have an update for you. Well, the it's the like only thing we know is that the drone isn't prepared yet. Yeah, I asked last night. I'll talk so to the enterprise and see if we can do something ahead of the uh, town meeting it's that can Frank further. Up Get Frank up there and a high tall tree okay. and Here we go. take the picture. <laughs> well, this is kind of cheating. I don't know if my my uh... cheating oh, works. Oh well, we'll cheat. That's okay. As long as we get it, there we are. <laughs> Got it. This awesome. is kind of cool. Thank you. Okay, <laughs> sorry about that, guys. Thank you, Mike. Thank you. All right, so. Um, here to talk about the construction updates for the past month. Uh, as before, I'll be showing you financial data from, from August, but I'll try to show you updates through today and over the last month, month and a half. Uh, starting with the WRRF, the Water Reclamation Facility. Um, this month, I'm just going to call it Tanks, Channels, and Floors, because that's what we've been working on. Starting with the process building ground floor, um, last month I showed you some photos with uh, steel beams running across. Well, this right here is the deck that was placed on top of the beams, and this is them 
placing concrete in these decks to place that which is creating the floors for the ground floor. So the basement's underneath. This, this serves as the ceiling of the basement and the floor of the first floor. Uh, last month, our UV channel, which is part of the process building, was basically just, we had a foundation placed. Now we've got the channels going in. So this, this is actually going to be um, ultraviolet disinfection. It's very skinny channels with UV lamps that disinfect your final effluent. Process building tank walls continue to be erected. Um, lots of steel, and the concrete um, is going in every day. Of course, we're building all four sets of tanks, so it's a lot of concrete and a lot of steel. The preliminary treatment building. Last month, we were pretty much looking at dirt and some foundations. Now we've got floors, a lot of channels going in, uh, this is the building that after it comes through the pump station and put potentially into the what we call an equalization basin, it'll come through here and get screened so that the grit comes out and some of the bigger particles get separated and then it um, will head off to the biological treatment in the process tanks. This building also houses the main electrical um, center for the plant. So this is the electrical building and you can see that there's plenty of conduits coming in that are coming in and out which will serve the the entire facility as well as some communications from your pump stations. On the collection system north um, in August last month or really in August, so it's almost two months ago now, they did a lot of paving on a lot of these streets. So your, your residences probably saw some paving going on and have some nicer roads. Uh, gravity sewer was installed on High Sachem Road, and they continued to do miscellaneous drainage and lateral work. Next month, uh, they're starting to work their way toward the plant. So they're finishing their work on Carlton Drive, and they're coordinated again with the with the treatment plant team on getting the gravity sewer connection. So the, the treatment plan is responsible for putting a receiving manhole in and the linear crew or the RB, Robert B. Hour crew is going to be tying into that sewer manhole. Force main is going in, will be going in on Orchard Road and this is important for your community. Work is going to kick up again on Route 28. So they've got message boards in place right now. I've seen them. Um, and they plan on beginning their final pavement in October, targeting October 10th, with four days of anticipated paving. This is a curb to curb mill and overlay process. So you have a nice, good looking road. And everybody should understand that we, once the sewer gets in and the temporary pavement is placed, we wait 90 days to see if there's any settlement that might occur. If you've ever gone down a road where you get a little dip because they didn't do that. Um, that shouldn't happen on this job. <laughs> uh, some pictures of past work. This is pretty much high sachem with the gravity sewer going in and another leach pit that had to be taken out and then replaced, put back in. Um, and then on contract three, which is the southern contract, uh, they've been doing a lot of work here. They've been busy in summer wood. They've got their gravity sewer and their laterals in place now. And they've been doing what we call pressure testing of the piping system on Mashby Neck Road and Ships Wheel Drive, Ships Rudder Drive. The masonry work at both pump stations is complete. Coming now, we should be uh, seeing, uh, actually, summer wood looks pretty good, um, but they're going to continue with their site restoration and paving activities within summer wood. On Quinnequisset, in about three weeks, they're going to start work there. So these are pretty much the last two roads, big roads, that are going to be tackled on, this, on these projects. Um, the Quinnequisset will require a road closure, so there will be detours set up around, around the around the work zones. On, after Quinnequisset, they'll move to Orchard Road, 
and that will allow alternating traffic. There will be message boards put up for those. We had a couple of gravity sewers that didn't pass their pressure test, so they have to go down and repair them. Um, it's rare, but it happens. So there'll be some of these places, uh, these two roads, you might have people calling saying, hey, they were here and now they're back, what's up? That's what's up. They just have to dig down and replace it. They're gonna be paving on Simon's Narrow Road, that's another mill and overlay, and they'll be doing, after November 1st, they'll be getting into the neighborhoods with Shipwreck Drive, Porthole Drive, Ship's Rider Drive. On Mashpee, for the two pump stations, they're gonna get the roofer out start installing the roofs on both of those structures. And I would guess the sidings as well. So this is some of the work that's been going on in Summerwood. There's a manhole installation and a lateral installation. And then this is kind of neat that they were able to grab a picture of the manhole testing. That's a vacuum test. So they apply a vacuum to the structure. And if it pulls, if it doesn't hold a vacuum, there's something wrong. Something needs to be sealed up. I found the throat pump station earlier in the month, or probably maybe late last month. They were putting down the foundation for the building. We have one building each on each site, and it's an electrical building. It doesn't house processor equipment or pumping equipment. It houses all the electrical, you know, the, the switch gear and the motor control centers for the structure. In front of the building is the wet well that's at a below ground structure, and that wet well holds, it's not only where the wastewater flows into and is held and then pumped out, but these are submersible pumps, so they are actually reside at the bottom of this wet well. And this is the Mashpee Neck pump station, pretty much in the same uh, situation with a the masonry is built up. So again, there's gonna be siding on the outside that kind of mimics the look of a, a cedar shingle structure. So try to make it look like a Cape Cod structure. And I took a, got a picture of the Summerwood Road um, that runs in front of that pump station. You can see the entrance to the left. But that's, that's, what a, that's what most of your roads look like with temporary pavement. They're very drivable. Any questions on any of the construction before I go into cash flow? I was um, wondering, Exactly. When you're talking about detours on Quinnacusset, that's a one-way street. And if we asked, would we be able to find out what those detours are going to look like and how the residents are going to have access during that time? Mm -hmm. There's a traffic control plan that was part of the project. Now, they police and, and the contractor and the construction manager at EBG, they may come up with something different. But... That, but there is a traffic management plan. Uh, my other question is back in, I believe, May, we brought in money so that we could put back streets such as Chatham Lane, Brewster Road, and I asked a couple of weeks ago about that, and you said you'd look into it. Oops. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> Can I write that down? Okay. Okay. Um, cash flow. So this is the treatment plant. Uh, tracking maybe a little bit below expended except expected expenditures but um, they're tracking pretty well you can see that there is a difference between the original budget in blue and the adjusted budget in red um, that we've had two change orders to date the first was done before they got out there for the for the additional tanks and then we've had another one since then what was the other one a bunch of items. Um, honestly, Joe, I don't remember exactly what they all were. I can, you know, they. And dimes or substantial? Uh, you know, most of the, I, the items run anywhere from, a, and some of them are credits and some of them are costs, but I, don't, I think the biggest thing in there was 46000 because we couldn't take the soil. We had to pay them to haul soils off. We had promised to keep them on the soils on site and realized we're going to get into the buffer if we try to keep the soil on site. Mm -hmm. So, okay. thank you. Um, the north system, <coughs> they had an influx of activity, just uh, finishing up their roads and getting some pavement done. 
but they're tracking ahead of their expected expenditures. They were able to work through these through the hard seasons. You know, the winter was pretty mild Just for them. Just a quick question. Who's doing the, the, this uh, mapping? Are you doing it? Yes. Could we see a parallel one that says how much we're, how far we're along to completion of phase one yeah. of the three contracts? Yeah, because that would In be. In other words, have we spent only half the money and we've only got a quarter of the work done or vice versa? That, you know, displaying the cash flow is kind of useless to understanding. I understand that. what you're saying, especially on the plant. This is a unit price job, so it correlates better. But uh, yeah, I can try to. I, I, I would add to that, if I may. We've discussed the importance of the schedule to completion, uh, to display for people on the website. And we want it to be easy enough for the average for lay person to read. Mm -hmm. And um, I, I was thinking type Gantt chart, but not necessarily Gantt chart. You know what I mean? To, to show the the elements, basic elements of the project that have been completed and what's pending and have it along some sort of timeline. Um, we've been talking about how to, how to request that and was wondering if you have something to offer for us to consider. I, I, oh, I just want to I know it's caution a little different. you, Kathy, because yeah. I lived with Gantt charts all my life. I know, I have And two. all they do is confuse everybody that tries to read them because they all perceive different contexts. That's why I want this it to be simplified. Draw, <laughs> this kind of drawing is very simple. And if it just says that we've spent half the money and we've done two-thirds of the work, that's good. Hmm. And anybody can understand that and vice versa. That's why I asked for it in this context. I don't want to see another Gantt chart. I, I have the original Gantt chart for the whole program. Oh, okay. All right, it's 32 pages yeah, I long. Yeah, I don't want, I, I hate Gantt charts myself, personally, <clears throat> but I'm thinking, I saw something on the Barnstable Town website that piqued my imagination to find something simpler. Um, and I've thought about actually taking this and just, putting the months on, I mean, identifying the start and the end date, um, and just using something along that line. And I think the it's... Website. I'm just trying to come up with something. I mean, because right now it's buried in the report. People have access to the report, but they don't know where to find it. Um, and we have a construction schedule for the immediate month that, the you know, the out, but we don't have something longer term, and we've been asked for that. So I, I'm, I'm sensitive to it. So, and I just, so would you like, I mean, a simple thing, I'm, yeah, every visual you have tells you something. Exactly. This, and I, well, this I just, tells you what they plan to spend and how they are spending. Yeah. Would it help if it had dates instead of just period? I think it's Whatever I would say, whatever the simplest way for you to show me, a comparison of funds spent to percent complete. Yeah. Let me it think could about even it. be that exact yeah, number, percent complete. To, it's, a tw it's a 24 month program. But you have to say a start and an yeah, end date. Yeah, but now you're going to get nine digits in in each slot. Just, and it isn't going to. Start and end date, that's all I'm saying. Well, because people have, you know, not everybody knows the start and end date when they go on there. So. Being sensitive to I don't that. disagree with the start and end date. Yeah. No, I don't need Because I read it out of the oh, even this is, We're halfway through now. We're in, in exactly. month 12. Even if this said through August 2023, it would help you. Because then you would know period 11 is August of 2023, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it doesn't yeah, you, say you, that right now. And, and, and just, you know, a little bit about just a preview to satisfy a particular individual. And it all boils down to an opinion of the people that are doing the work, and mm -hmm. they all have yeah. their opinion that they're ahead of schedule. So you have to be careful playing with this kind of uh, stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because then a year from now you go back and say, well, why, would, why, why did was we it say late? we were on schedule no, or I, not? I, whenever I've been asked for a Gantt <clears throat> schedule, I just said, no, I'm going to do something simpler for you. <laughs> so all I'm asking is whatever you you think yeah. we, we'd like to consider okay. um, something to just poke up there on the, on the what, I don't remember what section One of the neat on ways the to do it is to have two circles side by side. And you have basically a clock format that shows you're in month, month six 
and your completion is at month eight or five. Yeah. Then you get out of all of the lines and the individual stuff. You don't need all that. It's meant to be a graphic representation of reality. We're spending, we're, we're completing. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, I would advise, Sandy, whatever the simplest way for you to present uh, the percentage completed versus the percentage of funds spent. Even if it's a simple slide that uh, does yeah. exactly I just, that. I, I, try, I want to try hard not to mislead you. If you notice, yeah. this is the treatment plant, which okay. starts off pretty slow. It's called an S curve because it sort of looks like an S. Yeah. Mm -hmm. They gear up. But then when that equipment starts coming in and you're, we're paying for the high-dollar equipment, it's... So sometimes 20% spent and 40% done is correct, or versa, vice versa, 40% spent and 20% done. You can always add, maybe you can always okay. Add a disclaimer, you know, that but this is projected. You know, I'm, I'm pretty good at this. I'll see what I can come up with. Thank you. <laughs> okay. Please proceed. Yeah. And then here's the last one, um, contract three, which is the, the 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 southern one with the pump stations, and you can see that kicking up because they've they're spent a lot. They've spent a lot of effort getting the roads in good shape, and now you know now we're getting into the pump stations where they really will be spending some money. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Thank you. Thank and you I'll much. get this to y'all in the next day or two. Thank you so much. You're welcome. Thank you, Sandy. All right, next up we have the discussion of the town meeting warrant article number one. I'll have copies of the warrant and of the uh, brief description of option nine we saw in the select board, joint select board sewer commission meeting. Do we have any discussion? I just have a, a comment to make that um, we, we need to just make sure that we're clarifying that this is for the next phase hmm. that we're already proceeding. No, it's for finishing phase one. What? It's the new money. The new money. The money is to finish phase one. Finishing phase one is part of it, but we're calling the entire deal phase two. So we can take people to, to other documentation that doesn't say that. So I think you want to leave it as phase, finishing phase no, one. No, I think I want to say exactly what it is in front of town meeting, which is phase two, which includes the options that we eliminated from phase one in order to get the job started. And that this is primarily for the planning and the, and the design of the of the plan as it was set forth. So it, just so that people understand what it's all about. Here's the, here's the damn definition of phase. Where one group used know, the word the phase, phase and the other group used the word phase. And they don't agree. So every time we use the word phase, we have confusion. I agree with you that we should stay away from phase or the next part of the project. So we have where is as, as um, Sandy from GHD showed us where she's showing where we are right now with the wastewater treatment facility and with the collection pipes that have been put in or being put in for this first part of the sewer system, which will sewer approximately 430 houses, or 440 houses, I think mm -hmm. it is. So we now need to work toward identifying the funding that we need for the planning and the design for the next phase, the next steps in this. And that would, um, and as we go on to our next discussion about what we, so what we had um, decided on from the joint select board and sewer commission meeting, this is going to go a ways toward helping us to get started with that. And that's what we want to just try to explain for people. Could you explain to us the last sentence, the finance committee. Yeah, I was going to say the same thing. Not recommend <laughs> because that's approval. going to be the first thing that people see when they right. open up that warrant. So the finance committee voted uh, five to zero. I believe there was one abstention uh, that they didn't like this idea. Uh, the important thing to remember is this is FinCom doing their job, watching out for the Prayer Springs. Prayer Springs. They um, that is their purview, and to guard the town budget. 
Uh, it's not their purview to evaluate the necessity, the environmental need, or the municipal um, requirement under the Watershed Act that's looming over all our heads uh, to reduce uh, or improve our water quality to state uh, mandated levels. So FinCom stayed within uh, their lane. They looked at a very expensive project and said, hey, I don't see where this money is coming from yet. I'm not comfortable with it. Later conversations with FinCom, I believe, uh, have been had by other entities. I have not addressed them yet, but I don't mind this vote. This is their job. They see a big price tag. It's our job to evaluate the necessity of it, to convince the public, and to go out there and to find funding sources. So we're reducing our tax burden on our citizens. Uh, our phase one was not a tax burden on our citizens. Phase two, I would like to see a big hunk of it um, funded by other sources than our people's pocket because this is how the cost of living gets increased. Uh, little by little, uh, tax increase by tax increase, death by a thousand cuts. And it's our responsibility as a commission uh, to work with the rest of our town and our state legislators to find uh, funding sources. Uh, what I'm not willing to do is to tell everybody that it's not going to cost them anything or it's going to cost them a fraction of that because I don't know yet. When we've identified those funding sources, applied for and gotten those grants, then we can address the town. But uh, the town taxpayers and say this is how much it's going to cost. This is what we're coming to you for. This is what we've got funded. Uh, but for now, where we are and the amount of information we've been able to provide, I don't have a problem with FinCom's vote. I think they voted their conscience and I plan on uh, changing their mind over the next few months as we work towards finding funding sources for this. I think we're going to have a, a burden and, an, and a responsibility that we'll need to address to the citizens of Mashby to talk about the balance that we have to face. Um, you mentioned the, the uh, looming uh, Department of Environmental Protection rulings that have come out that have made a mandate for us reducing the amount of nitrogen in our water supply by 75%. And if we don't do this, if we don't begin to look at what our options are and how we're going to be able to reduce our nitrogen nutrients in our water, then it could very well mean that everyone will have to be then involved in putting in an IA system, which could be a cost of sixty to eighty thousand dollars, which is somewhat more than what the possibilities are as we're moving forward. And yes, you're right. We don't have a total amount of how much money is available, but we do know that there are state and federal sources, there are private sources, there are other kind of sources for funding as we move forward with the sewer system um, and as it expands over time. But we also have to think about, but what happens if we don't? Mm -hmm. There are too many other things that in terms of our water quality, and also um, how long we have waited in order to get started in 2022 with a system that was designed in 2015 with modifications, it's been changed, it's been upgraded, we have confidence in this plan. However, if we decide that we're going to do no more than where we are now, we need to weigh what the consequences of that is going to be over time to our water supply, to our uh, property values, to um, our direction that we've mm. already started. And to back up what you're saying, Madam Vice Chair, if we don't develop a mature and firm plan for the next step in construction with very uh, specific uh, plans on how, what, and where, we're never going to get funding from anyone. So for us to proceed now and develop uh, these plans, put it before the voters, and uh, really map out what this is going to look like, that is really the first crucial step towards gaining funding outside of burdening our taxpayers. Mm -hmm. And our SRF um, fund um, proposal has gone in. It went in when it was supposed to go in August 11th. So there are many possibilities for additional funding. Joe. I was going where we just ended up at. First of all, the town has applied for the additional money. Mm -hmm. Okay. Second of all, this is not to do anything new that isn't already approved. <clears throat> we have an approved plan to do phase one. As long as we call it phase one, it's approved. 
I don't agree with calling it phase two for just schematic reasons. Don't it's nothing personal. So <clears throat> I was prepared to make a, a motion that who wrote this do, this actual document? Stephanie? What document? Who knows? This the warrant? The warrant. Who was responsible for the language on this piece of paper? Oh I think the town manager's office did, but I'm not sure. Yeah, okay. Um, my suggestion is the last sentence under the paragraph explanation. Can't be changed. It's already it's published. It's already published. The, warrant. Hmm. the warrant is already published. It was published. published. Yeah, it was. Yes. Okay. Yeah. It's I already on the town website. Yeah. I give up. Feel I believe free I'm... to speak up at town meeting. Well, I'm not going to go in and create any more confusion. Okay. I'd like to keep the simple. Other comments on this uh, town, upcoming town meeting? I do plan on speaking. Uh, I'll talk to anyone who wants to join me, Madam Vice Chair, you'd be a fantastic and appropriate addition. Um, and I will talk to the town manager's office and I can talk to any of you offline and um, you know, really tune our messaging. Because I, I really do think that in the past, uh, there's been multiple voices over many commissions over many years. And while not everything has come down to be accurate, not everything has um, that was promised happened, I do believe that every single person who's worked on this in the past was doing what they thought was best to realize the sewer. Mm -hmm. And we're finally here. So really, our job is the easy job. We can say what is, what is happening, not what's going to happen. And we should be thankful for those who uh, got us this far, including multiple people in this room. Thank you, Chad. Thank you. Thank you. And I think as a commission, we need to be really careful that we are making clear that we're clarifying what the article is about, what the plan is for it to accomplish, and to help people to understand what's going, what's going to move forward. Thank you, Madam Vice Chair. Other comments? I just have one more that just to put in a plug that um, because the decision of the next direction, perhaps this would fit better for our um, next agenda item, but the um, joint meeting in July between the Select Board and the Sewer Commission moved forward with a unanimous vote in the direction that we were going to be going in and that there will be um, a, an office hour with one of the select board people, Dr. Colombo, um, at the library tonight at five o'clock. So if people want to go and listen and talk with her as well and to listen to what the citizens have to say, it'll be at the library tonight at five. Thank you, Meredith. Other questions, comments? All right, moving on to item four, discussion of all already agreed upon sewer direction from select board slash sewer commission joint meeting. I think we kind of covered that in the last topic. Anyone else? Uh, just so that people understand that as it's referred to as option nine, and just so that Joe realizes that I deliberately said item and not phase. Mm -hmm. So um, it, just so that we're clear about what option nine is that was unanimously voted on by the select board and the sewer commission to finish the remainder of phase one, phase two, and then to move forward from there. Are there any comments, or questions? Well, it doesn't. It doesn't really affect phase two in the original plan. In the plan. original plan, you're <clears throat> okay, right. Just, yeah. So Good clarification. keep that in mind while you, while you say things like that. Yep. I think the only thing you can say is uh, we are proceeding and <clears throat> it took the select board to proceed and put the, the cost of uh, doing the final engineering <clears throat> to finish phase one into an article, which this is, and then also that they did go out and apply for uh, funds that are available. Uh, we have that approval. That's got to go into the article. It won't be this meeting. It'll be the following mm -hmm. meeting for them to approve. And also attached to that will be another <clears throat> uh, article that says we want this outside of Proposition 2.5 so that we don't get that compounding effect on the uh, thing. So, yeah. I think it's moving in the right direction and we've got a settlement time where we're not going to make a lot of decisions or take a lot of actions now until the rest of the 
<coughs> process gets in the ground and the plant actually starts running mm -hmm. and we start looking at the cost then to start up line three and line four and, and doing faith in the original plan phase three mm -hmm. and that will all be in the, in the weeds for the next five years you know mm -hmm. for sure but we won't know when until we get up and get all of this closed out and actually get the plant running and then we have an, a basic plant that the town will understand they can do more if they if they vote for more. So All we're right. well on our way. Any other discussion before moving to the next item? I just have a question for Joe. Um, and looking at your years of experience, that we I agree with you that we we are well on our way. We're getting started. And if we don't continue to move forward, isn't it close to being a waste of money that has been spent if we go no further? If we don't meet this, no, oh, this is to Joe, I'll... Uh, I mean, if you don't go to a phase three. That's what we've got to start talking about a year from now. Because mm -hmm. it'll take us a year to get it all put together and, and drag the selectmen back in here to take a vote on what streets we'll actually do and get their agreement and decide on how much money to ask for in the next phase, mm -hmm. which will be three to four years from now mm -hmm. on the right, town Right, I was asking your perspective. Mm -hmm. Okay, so that's what we have to do. Mm -hmm. But you just can't rush it because the money isn't there and you can't, can't dig holes and, and build things without money. We can't rush it, and we can't stop it. So I think we yes. should move in both directions. I agree. Right. Yeah. My sincere hope is by the time we get there, there is at least some data showing get better way. water quality. Get to the four or five year mark that you're discussing, that we have a new ally, and that's data that shows improvement you're in the show, water quality. I would guess from a chemist's point of view, you're going to show results in the Mashpee River as long as we get this dam number one finished. Mm -hmm. and running and it'll take six months to a year probably for anything to show up mm -hmm. so it's two years to get the damn stuff running another year to have any results at all mm -hmm. and by then we've got to move on the next section and at the same time I think we'll see that the <coughs> percentage of, of nitrogen going into the river will drop off mm -hmm. because we've effectively cut its legs off mm -hmm. You know, and that was why we're doing what we're doing now with all of the investment on the east side of town. Are you sure? But we'll have to address the west side of town, which is another issue entirely. Mm -hmm. Agreed. Thank you. All right, moving on to our final item, uh, number five. This is going to be a tough one because there's two considerations here. The subject in hand is the time of our meetings, uh, which has been set for uh, quite some time, long before I joined the commission. And I am sure there are members uh, that the time of day that this uh, meeting is held, two o'clock, makes it possible for them to attend. At the same time, uh, a large, I wouldn't say a large, but more than a few people have said to me that uh, from the public, they can't attend the meetings because it's in the middle of the work day. Uh, I know I have missed more than a few and relied on Vice Chair Meredith Harris to do a wonderful job. Uh, chairing this meeting uh, because I've had the same problem. Uh, this one way to look at this is this somewhat unfairly skews attendance and membership. Uh, one of our one of our members uh, is no longer able to participate because she her um, job obligations have changed and she can't get here in the middle of the workday. So. While I, I am worried that uh, some of our members, esteemed members, need this time slot to be able to make this uh, meeting, I also feel it unfairly um, biased against uh, people who work, have a job, or can't get here otherwise in the middle of the workday for membership or attendance. Uh, having opened that can of worms, please discuss. <laughs> exactly, Catherine. What about a three or four o'clock meeting? Well, uh, would that um, shift the needle any? I yeah. don't know. Will the person or persons that have problems getting here at 2 please come up with a suggestion? Uh, she couldn't get here at 2. She's not here, so she can't discuss it. <laughs> that was my point. Yeah, I understand. But is there anyone else here that has a problem getting here at 2 o'clock? 
I do. Okay. Well, what's your alternative? What's your suggestion? I call. I um, would suggest that we meet like the other commissions uh, after the regular work day. What do you mean by that? Ten o'clock at night? No. What do you mean? Six, six thirty, seven. Well, make a suggestion, then we can work on it. Well, first I wanted to hear if there's uh, anyone on the commission now, and I think I heard a little I bit from Catherine. Um, if <coughs> changing this from two o'clock to a time after the regular work hour day would preclude you from coming. No, it would not preclude me from coming. Um, my concern is that we usually meet in a public building, and is it a, a strain to meet here in the evening compared to daytime hours? That would be, uh, I'd have to discuss, discuss that with the town clerk for scheduling um, not on top of other meetings. So for instance, uh, at 6, 6.30 tonight, conservation has this room. Uh, so it would have to be either uh, they partition this room and we take one of the other sides, and that means that only one of the meetings can be televised. Uh, the other option, the better option, would be to find a different night with an open time slot. And I would come up with the um, options from the town clerk and then put them before everybody here. Okay. When I first got here, and Joe can back me up, we did meet in the evenings. Mm -hmm. And as I recall, the, one of the reasons that we went to the daytime was because they wanted to be able to bring in... Uh, people who were working on the site for comments and things of that nature. Mm. Joe, help me out. People working, plus all of the town employees, the town uh, TV system, it's all very, it's built to service people in normal work hours, not after five o'clock. I take um, some exception with that because every other problem. meeting meets after the work day. Televised after five o'clock at night because they had issues with the employees on the TV, for example. So we moved mm -hmm. to the daytime, and it was acceptable to everybody who was working on the board at that mm -hmm. time, and we haven't had a, a problem since. I do believe we're the only commission that meets during the day, during the work day, when most taxpayers can attend. Um, I, I, I will have a problem in the in the uh, later months of the year, in the early months of the year, just because I really need to avoid driving in the dark. If we were to make provisions to you for you to attend via Zoom. Yeah, it's possible or to get a ride or whatever, mm. but um, I'm uncomfortable with that. I understand. I would suggest that uh, unless there's any more commentary, we think about this for a week. Um, look at our own schedules, talk to uh, any, well, I can discuss with Erin uh, what might work for her. I will raise your idea of the three o'clock. Uh, moving the needle closer to quitting time may make it easier for. <laughs> yeah, something that doesn't have me driving in the dark. Mm -hmm. Too much. Too much. <laughs> in addition to us looking at our own uh, you know, needs and what we can do. I will also go to the town clerk and talk to her about what possible time slots are available. So next meeting we can discuss uh, whether or not we want to shift and if we can, or um, if we are stuck at our two o'clock. Any other questions or comments? No, that sounds good. All right, in that case, take a motion to adjourn. So moved. Done. Second. <laughs> All those in favor. All right. Aye. Aye. Thank you.